Hello everyone. I started uh, a new playlist today on my YouTube channel about Autodesk Fusion 360, which is the third CAD software that I'm teaching on the channel. And I found this software to be quite a bit powerful, although probably not as complete as SolidWorks, as you'll see, but it has a few features that SolidWorks doesn't, and I really like them. And the big advantage of it is it's free for students and educators. So I decided to have some material covering the uh, basics and probably a little bit more than basics on Autodesk Fusion. So uh, this is our first video. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at creating sketches and probably a few simple parts, but then we're going to do more about part design and then mesh and then automate and all of the other things that uh, are available here. And note that this uh, Autodesk Fusion is cloud-based software. Okay, so uh, your material is going to be stored on the cloud, although you can also export them to your drive and you can read from your local drive as well. And under this design here, you can do generative design, which is one of the things that uh, Fusion does have and SolidWorks doesn't, which is really good. There is rendering tool, there is animation, there is simulation, so you can do FEA simulations, there is manufacturing and creating basically G-code and so on, and of course, creating drawings. And uh, there are some commands for assembly as well. It's not, uh, for instance, this is one of the areas that SolidWorks is a lot more powerful is assemblies, but it has a bunch of good tool assemblies too. So uh, we want to see the advantages of this tool. So if you look here on the top left, you have the tree. And of course, uh, under name view, you have different views here. Under the origin, you have your origin, the axes, and the three planes, X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z. Any sketch that you create will be under sketches. Parts or objects go, will go under bodies and so on and so forth. So this is your tree. And whatever uh, the history of uh, all the operations that you did is going to go down here. And you can play them as well. The view toolbar is here on the, in the middle at the bottom and a bunch of toolbars up there so these are under this create if you go these are your feature creations 3d objects and then uh, under modify are the rest of the things for 3d parts under construct you can create planes under inspect you can do measurements and so on you can insert pictures one of the powerful things you can bring vendors and manufacturer parts directly from their website if you, they have a cat file there is automate, you can do mesh file creations and manipulate them quite a bit powerfully, which is really good. So let's say, for instance, we want to create some sketch on like the top plane or XY plane. So we pick the XY plane and then we click on this button, which is called create a sketch. By the way, a bunch of your commands also, they do have a key uh, board shortcut, for instance, if we go under create, right, if we want to extrude the sketch, if the sketch is selected, we can just press uh, the letter E from the keyboard or for a whole H. Not all of them do. Some of them do. OK, so some of the uh, shortcuts as we go through, I'll tell you that there are some shortcuts that are very, very useful. So here, let's say we pick the X, Y plane and then we go to create the sketch. Now we can see normal to it. And here under the sketch palette, we can see a bunch of things that we can check or uncheck them. We'll get to that. Also, we can add comments as well here. So for instance, what do we have now? You see that the sketch toolbar is activated. So now under create, you have different commands. For instance, again, look, if you want to draw a line, you can just use L. For rectangle, you can use R for two points, but for the center one, you don't. There is circle C, there are different types of circles, there are arcs, there's polygon, ellipse, slots, spline, conic sections, point, text, mirror, pattern, there is projection here, and for a sketch dimension, which is one of the most common one that you use, you have to use uh, D if you want to. So we have all of this, and then uh, under modify, also we have fillet chamfer, offset, blend, curve, trim, extend, and so on and so forth. The change parameters, this is where you can add formulas and equations. I'll show you those 
and here under constraint you can add all sorts of geometric constraints and so on okay so and if you by mistake activated the command like what i did right now and you want to shut it down very fast use the escape from the keyboard and you can turn it down very fast turn it off now if you look here for instance if you want to have the grid here by default it's active but if you just uncheck it here it can go away right or snap to the point right now if i go and let's say i want to draw a rectangle right now i can snap to a point you see that when i i can click anywhere but i can also click on a grid point as soon as i move it on over a grid point you see a small blue rectangle appears over the cursor so i'm snapping to the point it allows me to snap to the point but if i turn it off you see now nothing appears to show me that my cursor is exactly at an intersection point so many times you want to have this snap to the point on if you are uh, really caring about starting at a, a grid point so let's say for instance here i draw a simple rectangle so i go from here to uh, here and you can see uh, before even i click at the other uh, end point and finish the sketch I have two uh, windows, one of them with a dimension of 50.3 and the other one with 43.18. And on the go, if you want, you can uh, type in the dimensions. For instance, let's say I want this to be 50 wide and 40 height. So I type in 50 right now. And then to move to the other window, I use tab. It moves to the other window. I type in 40 and then I enter and boom, here, that's my rectangle okay now is this rectangle uh, perfect i mean like there is nothing that you can do to it well if you grab a corner and you drag it you see that you can move it around although the dimensions are fixed the location is not so you want to uh, set the dimension as well and you can do that by offsets or you can do by geometric constraints right so let's say i want to add the dimension let's say the offset from this edge to origin and this edge to the origin and remember that to add the dimension we can use letter d from the keyboard or you can see down here so the fast thing is here i use d the command is activated i click on this edge and then i click at origin it gives me this offset and then i type in the number and then i repeat that with this one and the origin again and there we go and now you see the color instead of blue is turned to black so the color of the sketch is black means the sketch is fully defined. This one is perfectly defined and it's ready to be used. And it's a closed profile so you can extrude it and you can do other things. Okay, so once your sketch is finished, then you click on, and I'll come back and explain the rest of the sketch entities, but you come back and click here on finish a sketch. And by default, it gives you back the 3D perspective, the uh, isometric view right but you can see any other view if you want so you can click here on this top view front view right view right so i want to see it from the right i want to see it from the top or i want to go back to isometric so i click here and say go home and right or you can go here and say go home and it takes you back to the isometric view or if you want to see it in perspective you click here and it goes to perspective view right okay there was another sketch here that i made earlier i deleted it anytime you want to go back and edit the sketch you can simply right click on the sketch and pick what edit the sketch right so i can go back and edit the sketch or let's say if i want the plane that i made the sketch on to be a different plane i can change that as well so here i made it on the basically the bottom plane here right or the xy plane if i want to change it i right click here and say what redefine the sketch plane and let's say here i want it to be on the front plane xz so one is selected right and i okay that and you see now the sketch is basically selected as this one and uh, we can use the extrude right and with the extrude i'm ready to do the extrusion here right or i can use the e instead of clicking on extrude i can use e from the keyboard that command becomes activated we pick the sketch you see here the sketch is selected now and from the profile or with offset with the profile or from object i can start i can go one way or two ways differently or two ways symmetric so let's say i want to go symmetric in both directions 
How far do I determine that by a distance or something? In this case, there is nothing else to refer to, so I go with the distance. How far you can specify a distance here, or you can grab this arrow and move it, and the distance is going to be reflected there. If you want, you can give it the taper angle, right? So let's say here I give it a five degree, and you see it is going basically uh, outward, right? And you see here there is there are some options here. There is this parameter that is 5 right now. You might say, well, can I invert the taper angle? If I do negative 5, you see now it goes inward, right? If you look from the right view. And by the way, how would you zoom to fit something? There are several ways to do it. If you go down here, right, there is zoom window and fit. And the best thing is the keyword F6. So you use the F6 here and there we go it brings it to the right size and you see clearly that it is uh, tapered in both directions right or if you don't want it you can go back and modify that and by the way uh, the object the 3d object that you made is now under bodies so this body one is made here and the icon for the operation that you did extrude one is now added to this bottom row and this uh, line here you can move it back and you can suppress basically something okay you see here the um, 3d body is uh, suppressed because i move this bar this rollback bar and i can bring it back or i can uh, basically click on play and it shows the steps i have taken which is the first one the sketch then the extrusion okay and again you can right click on the body and say what you can edit the uh, body if you want to, right? So here I have this body here and this body I can also modify, but you might say, well, there is nothing here that shows you to where to modify. You don't see any edit feature and you're right. Uh, despite the sketch that you could right click and get to edit the sketch, if you right click on the body, it does not give you edit body, okay? You can delete the body, you can remove it, you can hide it, you can isolate it from the rest, you can change the opacity, okay? There are lots of things, you can apply material, color, and so on. But if you want to edit that extrusion itself, you come here and right-click here, and that gives you edit feature, or you can edit the sketch of it. So if I want to edit that, let's say get rid of the taper angle, here I come back and type in zero, and I get my object, right? Or let's say if I wanted to uh, make it a thin feature, I can come here and instead of extrude, I do a thin extrude and give it some wall thickness here, right? You see here, let's say two mils. And then you can see whether you want it on both sides or on one side, correct? You can give that thickness and you can get basically this uh, empty box there. Okay, so, so far we learned how to create a simple sketch, make it fully defined by dimensions, get out of the sketch, apply extrude, and then modify the sketch, modify the plane of the sketch, and modify the simple extrusion, right? So let me show you a few other things that are important before going back to the sketch. So I showed you these different views and the isometric, but if you want to pan or rotate the object, what can you do so if you want to pan you can click on this pan and you can pan it if you want to rotate or orbit here is called you can do constraint orbit or free orbit so if i click on free orbit i should be able to basically rotate the object in any way that i want and uh, of course i have the, um, the zoom window which you are allowed to zoom at a specific region or zoom to fit and I have zoom in and zoom out and uh, can you use your uh, mouse the answer is yes but what exactly your mouse does when you right click left click or use this uh, scroll depends on the setting so for instance here if I left, left click right now I'm doing nothing happens if I right click of course I get the contextual menu which is very powerful and there are lots of things that you can do with it which we'll get to it right so you can get your pan zoom all of this here and if i do scroll right now nothing happens but if i hold the scroll down it allows me to rotate the objects you see 
So if I hold down the scroll and then move my mouse, it allows me to rotate. Also, if I just scroll in and out, right, I do zoom in and out. So if I just scroll, then I have zoom in and zoom out. So I can do rotation and the zoom in and zoom out using what? Using the uh, scroll. And if you want to change that, so you can go here and you can go to preferences. And then uh, if you look here under general, the type of thing that you can do with pan zoom orbit, it can follow the standards of Fusion, Inventor, SolidWorks, Tinkercad, and so on. Since I use SolidWorks for quite a long time, I change my mouse to kind of match what it does when you use SolidWorks. So you can change that option here. And there are lots of other settings as, as time goes and I make more and more lectures, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so uh, let's go back and look at the sketch again. So we right click on the sketch and go back to sketch. So one way to make this sketch fully defined was to add these two offsets, right? So let's get rid of these offsets. So go back to under defined again, right? So here I deleted these two dimensions and again, it is free to move. The color goes to blue again. And one other way to do it is using geometric constraints. So let's say I can grab this corner and I can grab origin, hold down control, grab both of them. I go under constraints and there are different types of constraints. The one that are black, I can use right now. The ones that are gray, I cannot use. And of course, the one that makes the most sense right now is to make them coincident. You see, there we go. And again, the sketch is fully defined. Or I want, I can go ahead and uh, basically only make this uh, corner point just vertical or horizontal with the origin. So if I pick this point and pick origin, now I can make them to only be vertical and horizontal or horizontal, just one of them. So I can click on this guy. And if you see right now, it's forced to be horizontal. So now uh, let me um, turn it off. So now if you look, I can only move in this uh, horizontal direction because there is an extra horizontal constraint is added, right? And I can right click on it and delete it. So now it should be free to move again, or I can make it vertical. So here I click here and click here and then click on this. And since this is both of them, both horizontal, vertical, you might say which one will be selected because it doesn't give you an option to pick either horizontal or vertical. It decides based on one of them. And which one would it decide? Like this time, if I click, would it force it to be horizontal like last time or make it to be vertical? Well, let's find out. So if I do it, this time it becomes vertical. And you might say, what changed between this time and last time? And the answer is the distance. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I get rid of this, right click and get rid of this constraint, it's the distance between this point and this point, whichever one of the two distances between this, uh, this X and this Y, whichever one that is smaller, it's going to uh, basically get rid of that. So here, let's say this vertical distance is three units. The horizontal distance is two and a half. So it gets rid of two and a half and bring this guy to be vertical. But if I bring it here, let's say, now my vertical is one and a half. My horizontal is two and a half. So it gets rid of this one and a half. So in this case, it makes it horizontal. You see right now. So whichever one that is the smallest, it is going to pick on that and uh, can convert it to zero, and that is how it picks either horizontal or vertical alignment. Okay, so these are uh, some of the things that you can do for uh, a rectangle like that. Okay, and let's pick this whole thing and delete it. Now there are other sketch entities, right? So there is the center rectangle, which is a very uh, powerful tool. There is the three-point rectangle, which is like a rotated rectangle, circle, and so on. So let's say if I pick a, a circle here, and then I pick another circle there, right? Now here, I automatically made them coincident by when I drew the second circle, I clicked on the center of the first circle. So I kind of forced them to be concentric. But if you didn't, so you just click maybe here, 
and now you want them to be concentric you just uh, hold down control you pick both of them you go under here and you pick what the concentric and there we go and that's the symbol of concentric and then let's say you can pick d and give them two diameters so let's say 50 now you might say if i pick this circle and this circle would it give me the offset yes it does so you can go the radial offset and let's say for instance here you can do again one horizontal and one vertical offset or if you hold it like this you can do a diagonal which is not really a good idea in dimensioning but sometimes you might need a diagonal right and so here if i just do this other dimension I should be able to make the whole thing what fully defined by a few dimensions and an extra constraints and as you can see there are lots of other things i can make tangency equal parallel perpendicular and so on and so forth for instance let's say i want to make like two sketch of two pulleys that are connected by two lines right so here let's say i get rid of this big circle okay and uh let's go ahead and add some dimension to this one so this is one circle and then i draw another circle and let's say something like this i also force these two centers to be horizontal with each other so this one and this one you see now they're horizontal and so all I need is a, an extra distance to make it fully defined. And now I can go ahead and draw two lines. So let's say one like this, and then another one like that. Okay, so now I pick this line and the circle, and I force them to be tangent. Or you can see it up there. I do a similar thing with this one. And now you see it's both tangent to both of them. Then I repeat it for the bottom line. And then this one. There we go. So you got all four connections. The only thing is this one does not extend all the way to the circle. Right? These other ones do. This one doesn't. And you might say, is there a way to extend this line to the circle? If you go here see if there is a tool called extend seems like there is so you click on the line and you see it extended it all the way to the circle so now seems like your lines are attached to the circles if you want to get rid of this middle uh, parts of the arcs you can go to the modify tool or trim tool in this case and you can get rid of this portion and get rid of what that portion and here is basically what the uh belts that goes around to pulley Okay, now let's say you want to uh, offset this, right? So uh, here we can pick the offset tool and then if you turn this check on, then it is once you pick one part of the uh, sketch, it is going to pick the rest of the chain too. And so here, let's say 3 mil offset and there we go. Or you can basically uh, do the... Um, Philip and make this basically be like negative three right and be inside so that is like if you want to offset that let's say you want to mirror this and get a, a replicate with respect to some line so here you can pick a line and draw a line like this okay a vertical line and you can see the symbol of vertical here and now you can mirror it, or if you don't want to use a line, you want a center line, you can convert the line to a center line. And you simply, once you pick that, you go under a sketch palette. And here, this option, if you click on it, converts it to a center line. If you click on this one, it will convert anything to a construction element. So let's say I want to convert it to a center line. There we go. So now this is the thing that we use for. Um, basically mirroring right so here i pick all of this and you can do a uh draw a window and select the whole thing and now i pick the mirror i selected all objects and this is my mirror line and there we go this is my uh mirror and the symbol that you see here that's the symbol of symmetry
or something that is mirrored. So that is the symmetric constraint that uh, should be also available here, as you can see. That's the symbol of that. Okay? And as I said, you can convert anything to a construction element. So let's say you don't want this inner part to be uh, the actual part of the sketch. You just wanted the construction element, so you just use it for guidance in the sketch and you don't want to extrude it or anything, you can go there and then you can click on this one and you see now they're all converted to what? To construction elements. Okay, under the create, as I said, there are other tools. One thing that I want to show you is text and then maybe pattern and projection because the rest of them you have probably seen if you ever use any other CAD software. So use the slot, whether it's a straight or a circular slot or ellipse or anything like that you probably have seen or polygon right so if you click basically on let's say circumscribe polygon so here i click here as the center and then uh, you see that the polygon is tangent from outside to a circle that i determine the radius of it and then here i can change of course the number of sides so let's say if i want an octagon i type in eight and then I provide the radius of the circle that is inscribed inside of it. And that's all you need to provide here. And that's over, right? Now, of course, you have to provide the location of the center and uh, redo that radius here, right? So it's basically the distance, let's say, from here to here, this radial distance. That's this guy here. Let's say it's 40. And then, as I said, you have to provide that coordinate. For instance, you can put that center right at origin. Okay. And uh, that should allow you to make it fully defined. Right. And you might say, is it fully defined now? Not yet. Why? Because the orientation is not fixed. If you click on that line and force it to be horizontal, let's see if I can do that. There we go. Now it is fully defined. Okay, so the orientation as well as dimension and the center should be all given. Uh, so let's go about the text. So let's say here, for instance, I create a spill line, which is a smooth curve passing through a bunch of points. So you click on the control points and it keeps creating the spill line for you. Let's say, for instance, you want to do something like the profile of a wing, right? An airfoil. So you click here and then you click the upper part and then you do the lower part of the uh, wing or airfoil SP line. You double click at the end point. Okay. And that is where the SP line will be terminated. And here you click on a bunch of points for the last, for the bottom SP line. There we go. And this is your what? This is something similar to an airfoil with a top SP line and a bottom SP line. And it has a bunch of control points that you clicked on. And you can grab these control points and you can move them and you can reshape your SP line as you can clearly see. And also you can add control points if you want or you can delete. So let's say I want to get rid of this point. I just click on it and use the delete from the keyboard. You see it's gone. Or let's say now I want to insert two points on this SP line. I select it first then I right click on it and then say insert SP line fit point. And let's say here I insert one here and then maybe one here. There we go. Okay, so now I have more control points. And again, as I said, I can do more local changes. Now, let's say you don't want to extrude this SP line. You just want to write something over the SP line. So you click on it and you convert it to a construction element here. And then you can click on the text command and you say, hey, I want to write text on a path instead of just a, a random place that I click on. So I want to write it on this path and then write whatever you want. So here I say, for instance, fusion, right, 360. I want to write that. And you can see the text is appearing here. And if it's not going the right way, you can always reverse it like this. Now it's on the other side, right? Or here, you can see this can go above or below, right? And here it can do fit to the path. So the spacing will be 
variables so it does fit to the path here right and then you can also flip horizontally and vertically like this okay so you can do the Phillips to get what you want so you see here on the left or on the right and you can make it a bold font and you can change the font the font size so let's say I want font 20 okay something like this and you can use a space to move it along the path something like that okay right and you can change the spacing between them and so on so let's say the spacing is zero if i say one right or if i say five or anything you see that the spacing does change here and you can okay that now that you got this sketch, you can do anything you want with it. So you can write this text over some object, over some surface, and you can use emboss or deboss if you want to create, let's say, the logo of your company. Okay, so this text is another one of the tools that are available. You can also do patterns here. So let me very fast show you a pattern. Let's say you have a corner rectangle, right? Something like this and inside this corner rectangle you want to repeat a bunch of circles so let's say i have one circle here and then i want to repeat this so all i need to do is to pick the circle and then to go to the pattern so let's say rectangular pattern and here the object is selected for the direction first direction i pick this direction and here i need to provide the quantity and the distance so let's say every I don't know 10 mils right or every in this case maybe 30 mils give me uh, one up to three and if they have overlap and you don't want overlap maybe you want to change it so let's say here and uh, seems like still I need to go up a little bit there we go something like this and for direction two Let's say I pick this direction and uh, let's do a similar thing here. And maybe too much. Let's go to 60. There we go. And OK that. And here is your pattern. Right. And you can do a similar thing for circular pattern. For circular pattern, you just need a center. So if you have a center, then you can create what you can create a circular pattern right so let's say for instance this is a, a base that you have and then this is um let's say another one and then let's do another one here like this in the middle but this one i will convert it to a construction element so uh let's say here I do this a construction element and then on this construction element I draw a circle centered there a small one something like that and then I pick this one I go to the circular pattern and that object is selected and for the center I pick this point as the center and then I provide the spacing and I can say to do full, which means 360, or just do a partial angle less than 360, or do symmetric. So let's say something like that, six, right? And there we go. And this is something that you see in flanges in mechanical parts, right? Quite common. Or something like this, which is kind of like a um, uh, sheet metal. So these are quite common in sketches. I just made those for you. And as I said, the rest of it is not anything special. One thing I want to show you is projection, which I'll show you. Under modify, we have fillet and chamfer. Offset I showed you. Extend and trim I showed you. Scale might be something good. Break is just to break it at a specific point and move and copy. So let me show you a few of these. So let's say again, draw a um, corner rectangle. And now, of course, I can fill it the corner. So I just pick the two edges, provide the radius, and then that corner is filleted. Or I can do a chamfer on it. And you can see I can do equal distance, distance, angle. There are different types of chamfer I can do. I can do two distance chamfer. So I pick here and I pick here. And you see there were two distances. One was 5.5 and the other one 
I can also pick, right? So here I can change these. Let's say one of them is six. The other one is, let's say four. And I can do a, a two different distance chamfer. Okay. Or uh, as I said, let's say I want to do a break. For instance, I draw a circle here, right? And then um, let me move the circle a little bit. Let's bring it here maybe. So now what I want to do is to break the uh, object right where these curves are meeting each other. So I can go over the break tool and you see it shows me the intersection point. So I click here and click there, right? So let's see, I pick this one and there we go. You see, now I have a bottom curve and I have a what? A top curve and once they are separated now i can do whatever i want for instance i can click here and i can delete that right and as i said i can do a similar thing with the trim so for instance here i can trim this one too if i want to okay i can trim it just like that so there are lots of things you can do or you can pick this whole thing and you can basically do a move or copy or let's say for now let's just scale it so i want to scale uh, this whole thing let's see if i can pick all of them and then scale the whole thing about a center of scaling so the point that i want to pick is this point and then you provide a scale factor let's say 1.5 and there we go the whole thing is scaled by 1.5 and then uh, if you want you can do a move copy right so here the selection is basically uh let's see if i can uh select this whole thing there we go and you can do free move you can do only translation only rotation a point to point or point to position so if it's free move then you can freely move it in both directions or just one direction and you can freely rotate it right let's see here we go right or you can just do uh, just one of them or you can just type in the numbers here and so you can do the uh, move copy as you can see the command is m and that is what you would get out of that so uh, most of these tools i guess i showed you all of these uh modify tools the create i just need to show you the um, project and for constraints there are different types of constraints i show you coincident horizontal vertical tangent you can make lines parallel or perpendicular i showed you concentric symmetry i also showed you collinear fix is basically you fix some entity somewhere to the background without putting any constraint and you kind of artificially make it fully defined so for instance, if I just draw a line like this, okay, you know, if you want to make a line fully defined, you need to provide four numbers, which are the two endpoints X and Y or one endpoint X and Y plus the length plus the angle, right? But if I just click on this and say, fix it for me, right? So now this guy, you see, you cannot do anything to it. It's kind of like fully defined although uh, it's not a really good way to make anything fully defined but it's just kind of temporarily fixing it to the background especially if it has relations with other entities so when those other entities move this one stays in place in that case it can be justified otherwise the uh, fixed constraint is not really the best thing to do and i'm no big fan of this uh fix okay so let's say now you have this line and you have another line and you want to make them parallel or perpendicular of course you can just pick these two and then force them to be parallel or you can force them to be what you can force them to be perpendicular so let's get rid of this parallel one and now i pick this and this and i force them to be perpendicular like that as you can see right or if you want let's say you see this point is not the midpoint of the line and it's not on the line too but i can pick this point and i can pick this line 
and I can pick this option says midpoint. And there we go. You see now the point is exactly in the middle of the line and that triangle is the symbol. So there are lots of things that you can do. Okay, let me show you the last constraint that was called the curvature. And this is an interesting one. So it makes two entities to have the same curvature or second derivative basically at the intersection point. So let's say the first entity I have is this line and the second entity is this SP line. And as you can see, there is a breaking point. There is a corner because the curvatures are not the same and the slopes are not the same. So what you can do is now you go and pick the curvature tool and then pick the two entities and look what happens when I do that. So as soon as I do that, now you can see that at the intersection point, they get the same, what? They get the same slope. And if they have second derivatives, the curvatures will also be smooth. So we say the uh, continuity is up to G2 or C2 basically which means not only the two curves have a, a common point, the slopes, the first derivative and the second derivative are the same. So that was the uh, curvature constraint. So I guess I showed you all the constraints. I showed you all of the modify tools and uh, there is only the projection. So let's go ahead and do one projection. So our sketch is Good. By the way, one more thing I want to show you is if you click on this line, some information about it will appear on this bottom right corner. You see it's one sketch line and the length of it is 37.758. So you can see some uh, information. And also on the sketch palette, not only you can convert this line to construction or center line, there are other things that you can do. You can click on this look at to directly look at it. And if you want to show the points or not, if you want to show dimensions or not, or constraints, you can do all of that as well. Although you have this view toolbar as well. Well, I showed you the pan, the zoom, zoom to fit and orbit. There is this look at which exactly will pick a specific element that you clicked on and directly will zoom on that. Then once we go to 3D objects and talk about part design, there are lots of other things that we can see about the rendering, about the uh, viewport and uh, multiple views and so on. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, projection here. So, so let's say we go on the uh, XZ plane and we create a sketch on the XZ plane. So let's go with a center rectangle. So we go here and we pick this one and we click at the center and then draw it okay and get out and now what we can do is we let's say create a plane parallel to the exit plane so we pick the exit plane go to construct and then create an offset plane from that and then provide some distance so let's say for instance 200 and uh then we can of course always um, move it backwards right so we can bring it on this side okay let's say 150 so it's not super big there we go so we have this and now on this new plane we want to project that and maybe scale it or something so here we click on this one now on this new plane which by the way is going to show up under construction so we pick this plane go to sketch and now what we want is to pick this rectangle, these four lines, or we can again select all of them and go under create. And then here under project, I click on projection and let me show you in 3D that might look better. So uh, you see here and the specified entities are selected and I can check this or uncheck this. If I uncheck it, then the projection will not depend on the original sketch. What does that mean? It means if I go back and cha change the original sketch, this projection will not change accordingly if I uncheck the projection link. If I keep it, then these two will always be related. The second one is always derived from the first one. And as soon as I change the first one, the second one will immediately change. So let's say I don't want the second one to depend on the first one. I uncheck this and okay that. And there we go. You see now I got this 
projection here and for instance i can go back and see normal to this plane right i can go and see normal to it you see here if you look there is no normal to right so that's one of the things right of course if i click here in the front view it is like normal to it but um there is no option here called the normal to the face you see there is perspective with ortho faces is perspective go home which is basically going back to isometric right so i don't have that option here although i can do it other way but uh this is not what i have and now what i can do is i right click on sketch three and hide it for a second so i only see sketch four and let's see if i can scale down sketch four by going to scale and the center i pick the origin again and for a scale factor i go less than one this time maybe 0 0.7 there we go it's smaller now and if i go now you see i have these two different uh, objects and of course i can use that for instance to create a loft okay for the last thing i want to show you about the sketches let's say here i have this uh, sphere and on an offset plane i have this rectangle so if i go back to the plane of this uh, rectangle right and i go under um, project there is this tool which is called project on surface so you can project a curve on a surface and that surface does not have to be planar it can be any curved surface so i pick this and let me show you in 3d so you can see better so it says on what face you want to project i pick the sphere face and then what curves to project and i pick the curves the lines of the rectangle and you can see that the projection is done there and the projections picked by closest point if there is more than one projection and you can keep the projection link or not keep it in this time let's keep it and there we go you see that the projection is done and this is the projection of the rectangle on the sphere as you can see so this is the one that you can have and of course uh you might say why is this line has this extra curve to it isn't it the line yes it is the line but if you uh use the line look here i do the line right okay and i can keep drawing the lines so you might say is there anything that i can do so now i can draw a curve because right now you see all i'm doing is line after line the answer is yes you can and all you need to do when you are done with the line so let's say after this line i want to draw a curve then instead of clicking one left mouse key and removing your hand and drawing for the next you don't remove your hand you hold down the left mouse key and move the mouse look now there we go now i get the tangent curve so if you click on left key and remove you continue with another line if you hold down and draw now you get the what now you get a tangent arc as you can see on both ends so that is the last thing i wanted to show you about the sketches hopefully this video was useful to you and you learned the basics of creating sketches in uh, fusion and in the next video i show you basics of creating part design later mesh design automation assembly drawing inspection and so on and so forth inserting pictures parts and a lot more to come thank you so much for your attention i'll see you in the next lecture